Uh, all right. Well, well, we're going to start with the pledge, Matt. So, um, I don't. You're not going to find an American flag, I'm guessing. Nope. Uh, well, I'll do my best. Well, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. Is <laughs> got that, Scott? Liberty and justice for all, right? Okay. Uh, my dog, I just. She's crazy. Um, all right. Uh, it doesn't look like there's anybody on from the public. Um, why don't we do some comments? If anybody has any uh, right now. I got a comment. Um, I attended that uh, the police department did and the fire department and the public safety where they did. They had something this weekend on Sunday. Yeah. Where they certified more than 140 people over four one hour blocks on hands on CPR. It was, a, it was another one of those things that our community should be extremely proud of that um, a great public service was done. Uh, and there were a lot of people that were my age and older that were there who are, must be worried about their contemporaries and want to make sure they can help out if they're just necessary. But, you know, it was a, a very positive experience, a, a great presentation and, and yeah. something I think that bodes well for our community. Yeah. Um, Carol Conklin sent an email and said she attended. Obviously, Carol has some personal experience with heart issues, uh, and she said it was a great event. Uh, we're doing that. Did you guys get the invite for Town Hall? A April 6th, we're Thanks. doing it. Um, so we're doing it for town all Town Hall employees who choose to. We were actually going to close Town Hall. Um, and what's happening is uh, the chief is basically doing, the chief, the department is doing it at the middle school for middle school students. And he said, since everything's already going to be set up over there, why don't we bring as many people as we can get uh, that work for the town to come over and do it? So uh, we're actually going to close town hall um, a little bit early, walk over there at 245 um it's one hour come back at four um and whoever wants to do it We're, we told people they'll get paid for it you know whatever but uh just encouraging people to participate so we're doing it here too um but i That's heard it was quite a successful event um scott were you one of the people who was certified yes so it's okay. it was quick and it was excellent it was just a good good it was good um, Matt, do you have anything besides? Uh, How's the weather there, guys? How's yeah. the weather? <laughs> Are you there? You're there with your family, I assume, or everybody? It, it, just, just with my wife. Yeah. Wow. Good. Yeah. Nice. Um, all right. Well, speaking of your wife, um, uh, we had a conservation management uh, committee meeting last week, and. Um, Kristen Pugli showed up and made a comment that she thought some of the that there is a particular trail that is a little bit too close to the backyard of Matt and Kristen and um, she's finding people and dogs and stuff like walking through their backyard so uh, I don't know if you were able to watch the meeting or if Kristen reported back to you Matt but basically I mean it's kind of not acceptable uh and um and so you know there's money available here if the trail needs to be moved a little bit um you know whatever needs to be done better signage so uh and i think ray said he would be okay with that and on it and um, i'm hopeful that something will happen soon no th thank you for that um, it's, I mean, it's great to have all the people that are using the preserve. You really see the amount of traffic um, on the weekends of people using the preserve. Just, you know, a reminder that there are signs posted that dogs are supposed to be on leash well, in yeah. the preserve. And, you know, and, and, I, and I know everybody wants to have a chance to get their dog to, to have some freedom. But, um, you know, definitely have seen how much that's not being um, followed. Yeah, it's not. It just isn't. I mean, people go in the woods and they basically a lot of them just don't you know 
I'm I'm guilty. I've done it, um, but I've done it early in the morning in the winter when I'm running. I've done I did it two or three times this past winter and ran into one other person the whole time I was there. I mean, I made sure that there were like no cars in the parking lot and but um it's you know, I, I'm a lot more aware of it now than I ever have been. So I'm I'd be very hesitant to do it at this point. Um but Kathy Connolly made the point that, you know, she's finding, you know, there's no there's no waste barrel in the parking lot up there. So she said people are just leaving poop bags up there. And then, you know, we had a conversation about whether we're going to put a waste barrel up there. <laughs> and there's some, there's two sides to that argument. If you put one in, people are going to probably overuse it and then it has to be maintained. Um, and, you know, really, we should put carry in, carry out signs, blah, blah, blah. I I was up there one morning this winter, um, I think as I was either leaving or coming back to the car or whatever, whatever I was doing. Um, the the park and rec crew showed up there and I said, oh, what are you guys doing up here? And they said, this is part of our daily check. And if in fact they do go up there daily, then I can't imagine, you know, even though they don't empty the garbage on Main Street every day, they do it on Monday and Friday. If they are up in that direction every day, I don't, and they're driving their truck in the parking lot, doesn't seem like it'd be a big deal to pull a waste pack. So um, I'm going to mention that to uh, Ray. And uh, so. That's that. It's a good idea. Do you have anything else? No, nothing else. Thank you. Okay. So uh, today, Jennifer Donahue, Susan Quish, Erica Cosenza, and Dave Prendergast uh, interviewed three people for their advertising RFP that they put out. And they have two more to interview um, later in the week. So that was one RFP that was put out there. Uh, the other RFP is a Mariner's Way strategic plan RFP that uh, Chris Costa, Jennifer Donahue, and Bruce Carlson, and if I have time, me, are going to sit on. Uh, there were five responses to that. So a lot of activity going on in terms of uh, trying to get some new projects rolling. Um, the We've awarded the grant, the community connectivity grant for the sidewalks on Route 1. Um, we've gotten through the state. Uh, they were very quick on their turnaround, which was great. Um, and those would be the sidewalks from uh, Ocean State job lot to Elm Street. Uh, so that hopefully will be one of the first projects that get started by Bill Layden, who was the low bidder. Um, and uh, just watching a bunch of bills, uh, one of the bills that has uh, in the legislature, one of the bills that has been of concern over the last few years, and uh, well, I'll just say it, it's the uh, the beach access bill, um, saying that you you know it limits how much you can charge or who can go to a um, the town beach, and it's not particular to Old Saybrook, of course. But one of the complaints is, hey, during COVID, we saw how many people want to get out of the city and out of their community and go to beaches. But if you were to go to the Westport Beach as a visitor, you get charged like $100 a day or some, some outrageous fee. Whereas if you're a town resident in Westport, you pay a $20 and you get it's for the year. And so there was a beach access building. You can no longer charge an out-of-state resident um, more than, I don't know, twice the what you charge an annual resident for a day pass. And um, also, you know, every beach is for everybody. Um, so that bill died, as it turns out. There is a lot of opposition to it. It's bipartisan because, and the argument um, against it is, well, the reason residents get a better price is because the town maintains those beaches um, and uh, they pay their taxes and those taxes go towards cleaning the beach, raking the beach, putting sand on the beach, 
maintaining the structures on the beach, the bathrooms on the beach, and therefore we give our town residents a better deal than we and we raise money by charging other people that much money. So anyway, that was the argument. Those are the arguments for and against um, that bill. But that bill died. That's a bill that Ray Allen has kept his eye on for the last few years. Uh, one of the other bills that did get out of committee uh, is the governor's waste and recycling bill. I'm calling it that. That's not exactly what it was called. Um, that bill does a few things. It looks for a way forward with regard to um, a larger plant in the future, looking at future technology, uh, whether it's gasification or whether it's uh, some other form of waste to energy. Uh, because that's really the only way we're ever going to get out of what we are now. But in the meantime, it also puts forward a huge effort towards organic separations um, and taking other items of waste out of the waste stream, such as uh, tires. <laughs> right now, um, there's a big effort. Uh, there's an, it came out of committee, uh, EPR for tires, Extended Producer Responsibility, to me, it's really shocking that we don't have EPR for tires right now. We have it for mattresses. We have it for paint. Um, we have it for you know several other things, and it works beautifully. I contacted Devin Carney, um, and I would encourage you guys to contact your senators and state rep, uh, our state rep, to tell them that this is something you support. I told Devin I support it. There's an argument against it, saying it's going to increase the price of tires because blah, 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 like everything else, everybody says it's going to increase cost. Um, I don't know whether it will or it won't, but I'd be willing to pay another $5 so that our tires uh, are basically in a circular economy and they get reused somehow. Uh, so that would be a good thing right now. Tires come to the transfer station. We pay someone to take them away. We don't charge enough. Um, if EPR does get killed for tires, I'm going to go to a town meeting. I'll ask this board to recommend a higher fee for tires. The problem is you don't want people dumping their tires on the side of the road once you, you know, that. So it's a whole big thing. That's why EPR makes a lot more sense. Um, so hold on one second. Um, so, uh, Anyway, so uh, that um, that's some of the stuff and organic separation. We had a meeting yesterday with the Waste and Recycling Committee, and we're really going to make a big local push on organic separation at the transfer station. Um, so we're going to try to try to do some good stuff with that locally, uh, and that's what's happening all over the state is people are trying stuff locally, um, and so hopefully we can make a big push. And, and get that done. Um, I won't go on and on about, there's a bunch of bills. The firefighter cancer presumption bill is still alive. We are looking for an alternate funding mechanism for that to see if we can make that bill, um, make the firefighters happy as well as the municipalities happy. Um, the Board of Finance will be considering, the Board of Finance will be considering the budget next Tuesday, the town budget. Um, it is, I think, somewhat likely that they will move forward with the budget, whether it's as we recommend it or not. I anticipate that they will recommend a budget next week. Um, and that's a little bit of what's going on right now. Any questions or further comments under item number four? Uh, just one comment, yep. I guess, Carl. If, it, yep. if it's helpful, I'm happy to sit in with the Mariner's Way RF. P review. I was the econ developed chair, you know, when we were doing a lot of work trying to move, make progress towards that. So, you know, not trying to like take us backwards, but, ha but happy to be there to offer perspective. Yeah. Um, shoot me an email. That's the only way it's going to happen. Do. I'll forget. Yep. Uh, shoot me an email about that. Um, look, we want to make the best decisions there. And I think, right. I think you bring a lot to the table and I think Bruce brings, up, you know, I shouldn't say, I'm not going to say anything, but I think Bruce does bring a lot to the table on this. He has a lot of statewide experience. Um, and uh, he actually came up with a little chart 
to determine how we should rate everybody. And Christy, Great. Chris Costa and Jennifer were pretty pleased with that. So okay. we'll do. on that, Matt, uh, we won't be doing that until at the earliest next week. Um, it's just, you know, when I look at five doc things like that, it's like I need a block of time and it's not always easy to get. Is mm -hmm. it? Um, all right. So uh, minutes from uh, Board of Selectmen of uh, March 14, 2023. I'll make a motion. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any comments? Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And then um, we have a couple refunds here. Um, yeah. So uh, just I want to comment. Tom came down to me and he said, you know, normally we take a 10 percent administrative fee, but they never even pulled a permit here. They kind of just came in, put the application in, and then pulled it. So he doesn't. He feels it's wrong to charge them an administrative fee because it would have been nearly five hundred dollars for that. And he said, really, nothing was done. So it's Tom's recommendation that we refund the building permit fee that was submitted. So I'll move item A six A. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion on what I just said? No or, discussion on what you just said. I just kind of had a question as to if if we had a sense of what the project was. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. Uh, I think these were uh, the auto dealers. I yeah, because this is not. This seems to re be refunding the solar company, but it's the auto dealer location. So I was just. With the recent discussion we've had on solar, I was just interested as to what a possible project might have looked like. So, I mean, it must have been solar on the car dealer, one of the yeah. car dealership roofs, and obviously yeah. a pretty good project. Um, but like Tom said, he just so that's what it was. I mean, I don't know if that answers your question or not, but um, yeah, all right. it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. I think I'll move item B. Uh, it's been moved in. Uh, is there a second, rather? Second. Okay. Um, any, it's the same thing. Um, I guess they filed the permit fee and then didn't go forward at all. And uh, Tom just didn't feel it was right to take any administrative fee because he didn't put any time into it, nor did Sophia. So. Um, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, speak by saying aye. 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 Okay. And then uh, the firefighter uh, ordinance, Matt, I got your email. So I moved it up a day. This is really going to be, you know, this is going to be super quick as you guys. Yep. Um, and I just moved it to April 4th at 5 p.m. So at 5.30 p.m., we have the Kate uh Masters at the Cape. I anticipate um, this meeting will be 15 minutes. Um, it's one item. Shouldn't last very long. I don't think there'll be any opposition to it. Um, so I anticipate it'll be very quick. Uh, we're going to be in the second floor conference room. If you plan on attending, you don't have to attend. Uh, second floor conference room at 5 p.m. And all it basically does, I had Mike Cronin review this. Um, I had a typo in there that he corrected. Um, it just basically says that we can uh, increase it to what's its state statute. Let me, let's move the call uh, and then I'll talk about it a little bit more. Let's move it, uh, I'll move it, is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Um, basically uh, it's at a thousand dollars right now. That's the way it was written in the ordinance. Um, we're changing it to just be in a line with state statute. Uh, this fiscal year, uh, we do intend to go up uh, to 1500 and then the rest uh, perhaps next year. Um, so um, the intent is to get there over two years because over one year, it ends up being relatively significant number. It's about 50,000 per year right now. So it's about 25,000 per year to go up to 2000. I did tell the firefighters I would get there. Just so you know, in addition, uh, in the past, the the firefighters, as you know, have a pension through the town, a non-contributory pension. It's a modest pension, but we have a pension. 
um, twice over the last 20 years uh, in 10 year increments, there was a cost of living adjustment for the firefighter pension, not for the town pension, just for the firefighter pension. I was contacted by the fire department, um, um, one of the folks at the fire department, to ask them, they asked me if we would consider undertaking a COLA in addition, um, at this, basically it came about the same time they were asking for this. Um, we did uh, submit that to our actuaries, so that may also be on the schedule, not for fiscal 24, but for fiscal 25. Um, so right now, just so you know, we pay about $180,000 into the firefighter pension per year. Um, the amount, my dog is nuts. She, I'm watching her outside. Um, she, uh, you know, people walk by on the sidewalk and she just goes full speed barking at them. And, you know, I have the invisible fence and she pulls right up. Um, so, uh, you know, a, a COLA would obviously increase that amount. We are fully funded right now in with our plan. Um, we are fully funding it, I should say. Uh, but uh, it would go up. And um, what I had talked to Leanne again is, um, depending on what the number is, and, um, you know, if it's a smaller number, not a big deal. If it's a little bit of a bigger number, maybe it's something we do over the course of two years. Um, because, you know, when you start talking 25,000 here, 50,000 here, you know, the number can add up and it affects the mill rate. And I don't see any problem with getting there over time. But that is something that I'll bring forward to the Board of Selectmen um, probably early in the new fiscal year uh, and uh, present a strategy to move forward on it. Okay. So that's where we are with all the firefighters. Um, so April 4th at five o'clock for a quick town meeting um, to get this ordinance um, changed so that it can, part of it can go into effect for fiscal 24. All right. You say April um, 4th? Yeah, April 4th at five o'clock in the second floor conference room. All right, and um, we have an event that particular night, a whole bunch of us, I think, at 5.30, so this should oh, be 15 good. This should be fifteen minutes. Good. All right, so uh, I don't remember what we did last time. So this item C is a motion to move the amendment of the ordinance. So let's just do that. Um, I think that's been moved and seconded. Second, right. Yeah, all right. So all those in favor on the amendment of the ordinance signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. And then the call of the town meeting, uh, it's a one item call and it has to do exactly with what we just said. So I'll move call of the meeting. One second. All right. Uh, hold on one second. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> digging holes. Um, Somebody has questions. <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, all right. So the call has been moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Scott, if you yes. could pop in to see Georgian right now, she could probably print out a copy of the call. You can sign it, then I'll sign it, and then she'll publish it uh, tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right. So we're, we're going to suspend the meeting um, until five o'clock.